Hi, everybody. I'd like to give you a very short introduction uh, on why we on Antona Leonard uh, have initiated this panel session uh, as a fest, uh, a panel session which is dedicated to new forms of mobility and how so-called legacy uh, companies adopt them. Uh, we'll see what are legacy companies, but these are companies which are key players in today's value chain. Okay, and their role is fundamental in those value chains today, either transportation or automotive uh, value chains. Uh, but as Nicola Collin and the family uh, in Tang described, maybe you, you heard of Nicola Collin uh, before at the fest, uh, they are facing the digital transition in their industry. And also, both industries, transportation and automotive, they are quite merging, or at least uh, the lines uh, get blurring because of these transformations. Uh, I would even say that uh, uh, because we have uh, two value chains that are are like merging now, we'll have a new specific subject to, uh, to, to address today. And um, in this context, many of these legacy companies uh, they are turning to startups uh, and entrepreneurs to, to partner or to collaborate with them. Uh, in some way or another, there are many different ways to collaborate with uh, a startup when you are a legacy company, a big company. Um, if you can see the next slide, uh, there is only a short, uh, introductory post that you can find on the internet or you, you will maybe find it back on the shared uh, website which describes uh, the subject uh, we'll talk about uh, today. Um, so if we address mobility as we share, uh, wh why do we address mobility at the first today? Uh, on not only at the first but uh, at we share in general. It's because so many startups uh, in the sharing econ economy, they address this issue uh, of mobility, they are famous for that, blah, blah, you know blah, blah, car, you know Uber. We have four entrepreneurs and startups today that are famous in their field for what they do in terms of mobility solutions. Uh, and why do we have so many people working on mobility? Uh, I think it's because mobility is uh, at the heart of the climate issue and ve very important issue uh, for our societies. Uh, cutting GHG uh, emissions, greenhouse uh, gas emissions by factor four or decarbonization of mobility is really a big challenge uh, for the climate change. And maybe it's one of the most uh, important one or difficult ones because you, you may know that uh, in mobility and transportation, uh, emissions have not been cut uh, for the past years com compared to other industries and sectors which means that it's very difficult to cut emissions in mobility, but it's a big part of our emissions. So it's a, there is a very strong challenge uh, for 2050 and, and, and beyond. Uh, this is why at WeShare, we co-design with entrepreneurs, large companies, key public institutions in France and in Europe, a new acceleration scheme, maybe next slide, yes, thank you. Uh, at the heart of the climate um, acceleration scheme for those projects and startups, uh, that will have a strong impact on uh, decarbonization uh, for mobility. And this, this program, uh, which is currently uh, launching, you might have additional information uh, if you wish, uh, just reach me or reach Antona uh, later. Uh, we have many big partners from big companies, from key public institutions, from uh, startups uh, to work uh, on the ecosystem because the, the to tackle these issues, you need a new ecosystem. This is what we will discuss uh, right now. Uh, you need a new strong ecosystem, and in this ecosystem you'll find obviously startups or barbarians, people that are changing the, the game, but we'll find also uh, these legacy companies which are key to uh, the development of uh, this ecosystem. Um, we are here today to better understand how these legacy companies adopt new forms of mobility how they do this by collaborating with startups. And this for entrepreneurs sharing their experience with scale up, scaling up their innovative and disruptive uh, solutions with a strong ecosystem uh, where legacy companies play a key role. So first I ask you to welcome Stéphane Savour, co-founder and CEO of Colica, really cool peer-to-peer -peer car sharing company. And he will introduce himself and maybe you could sum up Stéphane in a few words what makes Colica special in terms of peer-to-peer -peer caching? Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Stéphane Savoré. I uh, founded Coolicar, who is a, a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, rental company, car rental company. 
uh, with uh, in-vehicle technology, which we have uh, designed ourselves. And uh, the, the technology is uh, used to uh, uh, eliminate the need to meet between owner and renter. So um, there is no exchange of keys uh, when you rent a car on Kuli Car. Started the company in 2011. Uh, we did. Uh, we had two years of uh, R&D uh, to design the cool box, and then we had about 18 months of uh, experimental projects, mainly in Bordeaux and Cannes. Um, so we had a co-creation uh, phase with uh, about 100 uh, car owners and renters. And, um, and in 2014, we decided to launch uh, the service in, uh, na nationally in France. And uh, we, um, about the subject that we are going to discuss later, uh, it was a big step for us because we decided to, we raised funds and we, uh, the MAIF, who is uh, our historic partner for insurance of Kulikar, become the shareholder of uh, Kulikar. So we have a str very, very strong partnership with Maif, uh, the insurance company. Thank you, Stefan. Take a seat. Um, uh, car parks are also at the heart of our cities and they are both necessary, expensive in terms of financing and te in terms of space also. And Zen Park is one of the leading startups to tackle this issue. So please welcome Frédéric Seban, who is partner and director on Zen Park and which will explain uh, a little Rosen Park uh, makes a better use of uh, available car, space, car parks. Hello, everybody. So I am uh, Frédéric Seban, uh, founder of uh, Zen Park, which is the leader in uh, car park sharing service. What we do is you, we create uh, park spaces that we uh, market and sell to our members. And those car spaces are located in uh, private uh, uh, car parking. Uh, like uh, hotels, uh, 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 landlords, social landlords, um, big companies. And uh, we uh, use those uh, spaces when the occupancy rate of the, of the, car, uh, of the car park is very low uh, on some uh, um, time-sharing, uh, uh, on a time-sharing base or uh, full-time. We now have uh, like uh, 40 uh, car spaces uh, in the Paris uh, region and we are developing the service uh, uh, nationally. Thank you, Frédéric. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased uh, to, that we have uh, Wicca today in this panel session because Wicca, you may know, is a spin-off of uh, Zilog, uh, which has a, a very long track record in sharing all sorts of goods for the last uh, 10 years uh, at, at least. And Marion Carret and our team uh, from Zilog have been pioneers in the sharing economy. And uh, Benoit Sino, which is, uh, who is a CEO at Wicca, an experienced entrepreneur, uh, I think uh, is yes, is here. And he will, he will explain maybe our vision of peer-to-peer -peer car rental, both in France and Europe, how you see it and how you... Good morning, everyone. So I'm Benoit Sino. I'm indeed uh, managing Wicca. We are in the... Uh, peer-to-peer -peer car rental business. Uh, it's a business that has been launched in uh, 2012 uh, with a few hundred cars. Uh, we are now posting 20,000 cars on the website. And the uh, starting point was to say a car is costing a lot of money to his owner. It's uh, an average 6,000 euro per year, used only 10% of the time. So the idea was to pro provide a way to cover part of this budget and part of this cost, or to re reduce it by posting the car online and being able to rent it to other people. Uh, the m business model is very easy. We take a commission on each, each, uh, each rental. And to do that and to grow the company, we have been raising funds, uh, both with Jenna Capital, which is the founder of uh, Mark Simoncini, the uh, founder of Mythic, but also with EMV, Ecomobility Ventures, which is a fund uh, of Total, uh, SNCF, and Orange, and lately uh, Early Kid and Michelin, so which is a corporate venture fund and we're, uh, you know, uh, working on synergies with them, and it's uh, the topic of this, uh, of this speech uh, t this morning. Uh, we'll see that it's, uh, it can be very powerful. It's also a question of tempo compared to the startup uh, world, but uh, we have indeed this, uh, this uh, experience uh, with the EMV uh, with Wicar. Thank you, Benoit. And our fourth panelist is a co-founder uh, of a project that has attracted a lot of uh, media exposure and attention these last uh, few months. I'm sure you have heard of from them. Uh, they may be the, like the ultimate barbarians of the automotive industry because 
uh, they introduce open hardware and open platform uh, in this industry, uh, which is quite uh, barbarian. And I'm pleased to welcome uh, Tin Hong Yu, CEO and co-founder of Wesley Eiffel. We are going to watch a short intro video introduction uh, of the company, and then Tin uh, will explain how uh, he's building a new ecosystem. Thank you. Okay, uh, hello everyone. I'm Tim, the CEO and co-founder of Always Vehicle, and we develop uh, an open source hardware platform for electric vehicles. So we are enabling startups to build their own project on top of it. And um, all the 3D files in the 3D project are released for free in our website. Over, we already had 20,000 downloads and there are more than 200 projects uh, th that are developing on, uh, on top of it. And we already ship to some uh, key clients, like the region of uh, Aquitaine in, uh, in France, and uh, they are developing uh, projects like uh, tourism, car sharing, last mile delivery. And uh, that's it. You Right now we will have the video with the audio, I guess. <laughs> got beyond thinking, we made it. We designed and built an open... What's next for mobility? Faster? Bigger? Luxury? You know, some of the traditional players think all of them. But we'd like to think that open source will bring not just vehicles, but the whole transportation industry to the next level. And we got beyond thinking, we made it. We designed and built an open platform made of a cutting-edge chassis, engine, and electronics that you can download for free to build your customized vehicle. Yes, it can be shipped in crates with lower environmental impact. And yes, it can be assembled locally in less than an hour, creating local jobs. But OS Vehicle is much more than do-it-yourself. It can be any vehicle because it's modular. It can be road legal to run on streets have bigger wheels for rough roads, or high-tech equipment for a drive on Mars. And being modular, if something is outdated, you just upgrade it without throwing away what works. Our aim is enabling makers and companies to produce vehicles with very high potential and no entry barriers, shaping a sustainable future for your project, no matter where you're based, no matter if you're small or big, no matter how many wheels or seats you need. That's why our idea of mobility is fair, modular, green, high-tech, connected, personalized, sustainable, and fun. What's yours? Start building it. Get your starter kit today. So now I invite you to, to, to uh, explain how you cooperate uh, with uh, legacy companies in your market and what's their attitude? As, are some of them aggressive competitors or do you have partnerships? Uh, what are your strategic objectives uh, as a startup when dealing with, uh, with those companies? Maybe someone would like to start? Um, uh, yes, as I said before, uh, we are uh, actually uh, working also with big companies because we have uh, this corporate fund um, funding us. Um, it's always uh, very interesting to work with those legacy companies because uh, 
they are in between um, trying to understand what's going on in the market, so investing for uh, you know uh, just uh, call options on potential business model that could uh, that could appear in the future, and also uh, in some cases trying to uh, complete what they are offering is right now, uh, using what the startups can bring them uh, in terms of uh, you know um, improving their their own service. Uh, that's what, uh, for instance, we are doing uh, for uh, with SNCF when we are discussing with them. They have a lot of strategy right now uh, to go into the point-to-point -point offering. So not only uh, bringing you from point A to point B with a train, but uh, bringing you from your home to your uh, vacation home with a train, a car, a bicycle, or whatever you name it, in order to be able to start from your place and to uh, get to your vacation spot. So um, they, they don't know how to do it themselves, but they can use you know new services and new offerings with new startups to be able to provide this full service uh, full range of service and uh, the discussion that we have around that with them is you know how to use car rental peer-to-peer -peer car rental to enable them to have a complementary offering once you are at the trust session to be able to get to get you know uh, through the last mile um, total is another example uh, indeed total is uh, selling gas so they are very interested in uh, bringing new customer in their in their, in their station and uh, they are working with us uh, to offer you know um, gas coupons and so on to be able to generate traffic on their uh, gas station, which is for them a new way actually to acquire new customer. Uh, and we are also building synergies uh, around this kind of dynamics. Uh, the, the, f the, the, the experience that we have in these uh, different synergies is that um, it's both very attractive and very interesting, but also very challenging because uh, it's very small companies, very agile, working with very big companies that have their own um, constraints and processes. So you have to be able to go um, fast enough to keep uh, the speed uh, up with your own market in, as a startups, but to be patient enough uh, to be able to adapt to their own processes. And I think it's a cost in the short run because uh, indeed it takes time, but in the medium to long run, uh, the, 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 the lever that you, you can put in place are so powerful that it can also enable you to grow much quicker on the market. So it's, uh, it's a trade-off between uh, speed and, and, uh, and um, potential. You know, isn't, isn't it a, a threat to the sustainability of your company if you work with like SNCF? They might be tempted like to copy you or whatever. Uh, in the long run, how do you feel about this on, uh, in terms of strategy? Uh, well, I, I think big groups have, uh, have you know, uh, evolved quite a bit in this uh, in these strategies. Uh, uh, they understand now that the market is going very fast, uh, in especially in the digital space. And copying when you are a big group uh, model like us, like you know, in two years are able to uh, post online fleets that are uh, the size uh, close to the uh, traditional uh, car rental companies, for instance, uh, uh, with twenty thousand cars. Uh, for uh, the, the traditional car rental companies in France are between uh, twenty-five and thirty-five thousand cars on the on the country. So it goes very fast, and uh, this speed uh, they cannot replicate. So I think uh, you see a lot of big companies now. Uh, as I said before, buying call options. So they invest in small companies and startups. And once they, they sense that there is a really good opportunity for them to invest, they are going to invest in the startup and, and, and help them grow, you know, potentially perhaps in 10 years from now buy them. But instead of trying to copycat because they know that they don't have the celerity in the big group to do that. Talking about speed in uh, OS Vico, we define big legacy company like dinosaurs, they're very big, strong, but very slow. So for them, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's key to collaborate with uh, lean startups and uh, wi which are faster, and uh, sometimes they, for them it's better to acquire them or invest into these realities. Yeah. So s there is like a potential for leveraging uh, resources of a big company, but how do you achieve that? Maybe Stefan, you would like to say something about uh, your partnership with Maif. How do you achieve to leverage the, uh, like, uh, I know it's, it's a very big company, Maif, so how do, does it work in uh, real life? Well, may maybe I could say a few words about the, uh, the, the history be be behind Maif and Kulikar. It's uh, ba back in 2010. Uh, I was uh, thinking about launching Kulikar, and I was actually looking for an insurance partner, either in the United States, Canada, or in Europe. At this time, peer-to-peer uh, -peer car sharing was very new. Uh, there was absolutely nobody on the market. 
or almost nobody on the market. And uh, going to fi finding an insurance company was uh, quite a challenge. Um, I met a lot of insurance companies, especially in the States, who uh, did not believe in this market, who did not believe in this vision, and who clearly were listening to us and said, uh, we, we don't see it, we don't have the same vision, so no go. There was a, a, a second category, um, quite a lot of them actually, that was an uh, uh, insurance company who, who believed in this vision, but who said, I would prefer if you do it first with somebody else, and then come back with us. Quite a lot of them, and, uh, and then we met uh, other companies, and Naif, um, who uh, after 10 minutes of talk said, uh, we share the same vision uh, as you about mobility, about shared mobility. We do believe that mobility is going to change, and we have made the decision to go on the market, go and work with startups, and uh, go close to the market to understand how the market is moving, and uh, that's why we would like to start a partnership with you. So that's exactly what we were looking for. So back in 2011, we actually started to work with Maif as an insurance company and as a partner to the Coolie Car Service. And in 2014, last year, when we uh, went for fundraising, uh, we, we obviously talked to uh, VCs and, uh, and banks, and we also talked to our main partners, including Maif. And it became absolutely obvious that Maif was the right partner also for funding. Um, because we, I, th I think the key between, the key in working between startup and legacy companies is sharing the same objectives in terms of uh, how you see the market, how uh, you see the market moving, how, how, is it the, how the organization is going to uh, uh, make that one plus one equal 10 and not two and certainly not one. But I think that's exactly what we are trying to achieve with Maif, one plus one equal 10. Uh, Maif is not only bringing the insurance package, Maif is not only bringing the funding, but they are bringing uh, a market vision, they are bringing a, a big community, uh, which is extremely uh, useful to, to grow and scale a service like Kulikar. Uh, uh, no, the, the other thing I, w I wanted to mention is we have another similar experience in uh, Kulikar. We, uh, we also work with a, a large group in France, which is La Poste. Uh, La Poste in 2013 have launched a project which is uh, uh, location des voitures de La Poste au postier. So it's a, it's a rental, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a business car rental uh, for private internal, usage, yeah. uh, internal uh, to La Poste. So if you are a postman in France, you can rent La Poste car for your private usage. And it's actually, uh, we have a partner with La Poste, we provide the technology and we operate the service for them in a white label approach. And also with La Poste, it's uh, the same vision, it's uh, the same approach, go with experimental first, try to understand the market, try to understand why it's working well in this place and not so well in this or the other place, and try to grow the business. So it's uh, more like a commercial relation, but uh, it more and more it becomes a partnership relation. Um, maybe if Frédéric, at Genpark, you, you don't, obviously you don't need an insurance product to be in the business, but what do you expect when working with big companies like MedCity in France? Or maybe you could explain uh, what's your expectation on what you're doing because... Yes, yes we um, developed a partnership with MedCity, which is um, a, a global actor uh, in the real estate industry. They cover uh, uh, real estate development and also they manage um, offices, uh, student uh, student um, apartments and uh, uh, all the scope of uh, real estate uh, uh, activities. Uh, first, it was, we had really different s signals with them. Uh, developers came to us because they have a real uh, issue to tackle uh, regarding the development of uh, eco-cities. Uh, where uh, the, the number of scarf, car, car spaces to build uh, is very low, so you have to create capacities with uh, uh, smarter systems, and uh, Gen at Gen Park is uh, what, we do, what we do is uh, car park. Um, also, we had to see them because they manage a lot of uh, real estate uh, assets, and, and, and we were there to uh, say, why in your offices uh, your car spaces are empty 
uh, during nights and weekends, please work with us because uh, we need your car faces to develop our uh, network of uh, shared, uh, shared car parts. So they were interested by, by that and so on and so on and all their activities uh, heard about Zen Park. So um, one day all came together and, uh, and we had to, um, uh, to deal with them. And what, what was very interesting working with Nexity is they really committed uh, to the uh, short-term interest of Zen Park. Uh, not only we can be an actor in the real estate development industry, but we are talking of project that will be uh, live in uh, two years, five years, sometimes 10 years. Uh, if we don't do business now with, with what we have, we, we won't be able to speak to them in 10 years. So we also have to deal with the short terms and um, we managed to develop a, a partnership where we help them on long-term uh, project, but they uh, really committed and engaged, uh, engaged staff uh, to work on their uh, current uh, assets and uh, being able to, to provide to Zen Park a new sources of, uh, of uh, car parks and uh, help us develop our network of uh, car parks right now, which is uh, really at stake for us. Uh, we all are in a competitive uh, industry and, and we need to deliver those, um, those car parks. Uh, and um, that's uh, really key in our par partnership. That's the core value of our, our partnership. But why do they understand, uh, how, do, how do they go beyond this uh, cultural divide? I mean, as you said, there's a very strong difference between uh, startups who need to do business in the short run and for bigger companies, uh, they have a vision and they, do, they work in the long run. Uh, why did they understand that you need to do some things in the short run, whereas they are in an industry where it's very long run? Uh, I, I think at What uh, makes it possible? Yes, at Nexity, um, they really have um, a, st a strategic focus focuses and digitalization and creating new services is really at stake for them, for the, for the staff, for the strategic marketing. So they had already um, uh, engaged a, a partnership with other startups. So they have uh, a previous experience. And uh, um, I think with that helps. We, we can compare with other groups that we uh, try to work with or are dealing with, um, where we have to educate them. They have to learn that, uh, okay, we don't have uh, 10 people staff, we can do uh, free adv uh, advice uh, for them uh, and speak to them for hours for a project that will uh, come live in uh, three years, five years, 10 years. And uh, at Nexity, they had some previous experiences. I, I think it really helped, us, helped them and helped us. Okay, uh, you wanted to add something, Tim? Yeah, talking about uh, legacy company, uh, you know, as Vico, we, we are in between startups and big uh, legacy companies like suppliers from Asia. And what we saw is that startups, they have low quantities in, at the very beginning, the first five years. And when they try to approach with uh, suppliers from Asia, they, they, they are rejected because they have low quantities, okay? Even in Europe, if you have uh, hundreds of units a year, you will have higher prices. And in Asia, they don't consider you if you don't have at least 5,000 units a year. So what we are doing is helping the startup ecosystem, enabling this, helping to collect all the quantities and negotiate directly with the suppliers in Asia. So I think uh, this is very important to understand also that there are some players in between that helps to, to talk directly and manage relations with uh, uh, legacy companies. So what makes it possible for you to do that is that you have a uh, standard platform, which means yeah. that all your customers, they will make use of the same platforms, which, which is why you can offer have volumes on one side, but offer low volumes to your customers. That's it. Okay. That's important, I think. In the, in the first stage, we are in the first stage of, of a OS vehicle. Okay, it's a very uh, step of uh, related to hardware and services. We we are we just proved our concept uh, by releasing our open source hardware platform called Tabby, and we released a new version just uh, one week ago. It's called Tabby Evo. 
Evo is Evolution. And uh, we are helping startups to build their own project, their own vehicle on top of it. Uh, for them, is uh, using our platform is very convenient because uh, you don't have to do the R&D from scratch. Okay, so we help to speed up the time to market by at least two years and also to lower the bill of material cost by using existing components and uh, uh, part of our custom components uh, that we develop. And in this case, when you talk uh, with uh, suppliers for like uh, lithium batteries, you really have to um, have in pipeline uh, uh, batches of, uh, of uh, cars uh, at least of uh, 5,000 uh, units a year. So we are helping in uh, collecting all these requ uh, requests and deal directly with uh, the suppliers. Okay, which means that as across and, uh, vehicles, just, okay. just to, uh, to explain what we are doing, we are building an ecosystem. Right now we, we are in the very beginning. And in this ecosystem, we are uh, including existing legacy companies like suppliers and also distributors. So what I understand is that you are building a big ecosystem, uh, but my question is for you all is, uh, uh, what's important for you when working with legacy companies? Do you think you, it makes, it helps you uh, getting bigger, uh, growing, or is there a risk that maybe you work with the big company, you, you stay small for a long time and you never grow? Uh, how do you see that maybe Stefan and then Benoit wants to add something? Um, I think when you when, when you are a startup, and we decide you decide to go in in a, in a very close partner with a with a, a legacy company, I think the question is again about the objectives. Is it is it about is it about um, education? Is the is it about we, we are trying to educate the to understand the market with you, which are which I think would be the wrong objective, or is it about growing and making it happen. So the question is, what is it that you are going to achieve with this startup? And I think for the startup, and it was the case for us, it's very important to understand if this partnership is going to help you grow and making it happen, or is it about educating a large business, which would be, I think, a waste of time, and I think it's something where we would not have gone. But um, again, like the, the partnership I was mentioning for Kulika with uh, Maif and even La Poste is more about making it happen and making it grow. Well, I suggest <coughs> that once uh, Benoit has, has finished, uh, we give you uh, the opportunity to raise questions. So we'll have like a 10 minute session of, of questions. So I hope you, are, you have uh, wonderful ideas to Share. Yeah, I think also uh, to make it happen, it just has to be a win-win deal. I mean, you know, these legacy companies are, are big, yes, and perhaps a bit slower than the startup, but they're still businessmen, so uh, they need to make money. And uh, the, the, the partnership that you can put in place uh, and that are working is something that helps their core business as well. Uh, if I give an example, for instance, we did a partnership with Citroën uh, a few, a few two, two and a half years ago, and they wanted to test their electrical uh, cars um, by uh, having people driving the cars around and showing to other people that it's nice to drive an electric cars and so on and so forth. And we, st we structured the partnerships where uh, they would lease out the cars for a few hundred euros per month or very little money in exchange for the, the, the owner to put the car for rent on WeCar. And by doing so, uh, we helped them, first of all, sell cars because it was a very low cost and it was possible because part of the cost was covered by the rental and second, to spread out uh, the experience because the rentees, so people renting the cars out of the owners, were discovering electric cars and it was helping out Citroën to launch this, this product line. So that was a win-win deal and that worked very well and actually they were fast putting this deal together with us. Um, uh, another example is, for example, SNCF. Uh, you could say um, it's a threat to our business or to their business because people are gonna take cars instead of train we don't th see that at all as a vision. What we see as a vision is that the more cars you have available for rent, you know, downstairs your apartment, the more um, and, and the more the cheaper those cars are going to be. And out of a sudden, uh, for vacation time, for instance, instead of 
taking their own car from Paris to Marseille because if they rent a car for the vacation, it's going to be very expensive. If it's low price and very accessible, then there is no uh, you know, out of stock uh, for car renting. They're going to hop on the train because it's only three hours, go to Marseille and rent out a car once there. So again, it's a win-win vision that grows the pie instead of you know, competing against each other. And that's where you actually create the traction. Do you know how, how they, they, they come over uh, this uh, legitimate fear that it might still be a, a competition? Uh, I think we, many of us share your, the vision you, you stated, but uh, uh, how do you know how they do it internally? Or maybe there is someone from, from SNCF who shares that. Uh, how you do it when you are in SNCF, you, you, you yeah. launch such projects? Uh, no, but I mean, they're, 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 uh, if you see uh, what they're launching lately, I mean, they're very uh, upfront in terms of vision and, and, yeah, and they moving do it, their service. The question is, like, it's a big company, so uh, if you the top management embrace this vision, yeah. uh, how, how can they do, uh, make it uh, happen internally and people uh, share the Well, the vision? then it's a question of internal governance and, and okay. putting this, uh, this synergy in, in, the in people's objectives. Right. If it's not in people's objectives, then nothing happens. But if I indeed the, the, the will of the top CEOs and so on are uh, moving down to the organization, that works. OK. Uh, do we have any, any question or maybe someone from a, a legacy company would like to, to tell something, share something about uh, its experience with startups, maybe? Or someone who would have another question about cooperation uh, in this ecosystem? No question yet? Um, do you want to add something about uh, your, your ecosystem? How, how is it made of, uh, I mean, you have both, you want to work with startups, but you also work with legacy companies. Is it easy to work with different players? Wh what are those legacy companies? You don't work like with PSA or Renault or Ford, but you, you work with uh, many different companies. W would you explain a, a little what are those companies and how you work with them and maybe what are the difficulties, what are the rewards uh, of working with them? Okay, working with startups is uh, very easy, okay, because they're open-minded, they're fast, they, we understand each other very, uh, very <laughs> in a very good way. Talking with uh, dinosaurs is like <laughs> very hard. Sometimes we, we need to have like five to 10 meetings to understand the basics, okay, of what we want to do or how we want to cooperate. Who are they? Okay, uh, maybe if we, if we can show the slide, the previous one, yeah, this one. Okay, for, for example, uh, there are um, people, uh, companies like uh, design and engineering. They are, uh, because they come from a very close industry, automotive and transportation is a close industry. And they, 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 they consider us crazy to release because we released our 3D files, our source files in, uh, for free in our website, so they, they went mad about this. They still don't understand some. And um, what is happening is that we receive a lot of requests of uh, designers and engineers that want to contribute and uh, want to develop their own project on top of our platform. And the first thing we, we ask them is to share their their vision on, in our community, okay, in our forums, but they are shy to do this. They are, they're not used to. So they, they, they are used to work secretly uh, for uh, two years and then release the product in a, a design exhibition or something like this. So that's hard, but we, slowly we, uh, things are changing. And uh, for example, there are some design companies that uh, use work with the top brands like Ferrari, Maserati, and uh, they are now uh, struggling because uh, the business is not as good. The automotive industry and transportation is shrinking, so they have less work, and uh, s some of them already went bankrupt. So uh, others are thinking how they can reinvent themselves. So uh, some of these design and engineer company, they. They, they, are, they are thinking to create a new brand because they know how to do vehicles, they know how to do cars, and they do it for other brands. So they say, okay, we can do, it, do our own brand now. So that's a kind of a 
uh, scenario. Okay, thank you, Atun. We have a question? Or maybe someone who, who shares an experience? Uh, maybe I, we can show the video of the platform because probably the... I think it maybe yeah. before the question. Or before no? the question, yeah. 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 Hi, it's just uh, there was no mic out there and you invited for comments or questions. So uh, I'm, my name is Nick. Uh, I'm from a, a year ago I joined a legacy business and I just wanted to say uh, uh, it's very interesting for, for that. Before that, I was um, in startups uh, five years in the US. I joined Prestalis, which is a old uh, dist press distribution company in France. So distributing the, the old press in in all the points of sales across France, and they're trying to reinvent themselves. And um, so I was um, contacted and hired there to be part of this reinvention. And the main challenge, the main uh, stretch is being, to, being able to keep talking with you guys uh, to make things happen, as you said. And on the other hand, um, make this cultural change happen, change mindset, and this takes a much longer time and so this is why uh, for example I I started hosting a forum within the company for people like you guys to come and talk to them and pitch ideas and uh, because we don't have all the resources inside and your resources uh, maybe they are scarce but they are much faster and quicker and efficient and uh, we started like s small bits and pieces of projects here and there and already had results and does it work do you does it lead to real business, a short-term business, uh, as Frederick said, or is it just talks? Uh, so, no, we try to make it very concrete. So, okay. because it's entrepreneurs and sometimes they have very small businesses, but what we do is we come up with uh, uh, MVPs, uh, we test and learn uh, with them, so, sometimes a small product. For example, uh, uh, just a startup that's doing, uh, they're, uh, they're called YouMindIt, YouMind.it. And uh, they are doing uh, online games for creativity. And so we did both like a seminar, a creativity seminar with our sales teams. And also uh, we came out with uh, a quiz, an online quiz uh, for our B2C business uh, to promote our app uh, and built by them. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, maybe we have one. another question? Thank you. Thank you. Another question maybe? Yeah. I'll move. Hi, um, I'm working for a big dinosaur you <laughs> talked about, La Poste. Um, we are very happy with the project you launched with Cool Car, La Voiture Postale. Um, I think uh, two, two aspects, maybe. Uh, you talked about win-win situation, and I think in uh, sharing mobility, you, we have to talk more about in, uh, economic aspects for legacy company, um, because we have lots of cars and lots of stuff that are not uh, used uh, as much as they could be. So uh, it's a simple uh, aspect of the situation, but we have to talk about economy so that we can um, uh, persuade our uh, staff to uh, uh, build such projects. And um, you also, also talked about the vision of the CEOs and so on. I'm not sure uh, this was really uh, the beginning of the project. And I think that uh, we, legacy company, uh, uh, deal with the same issue as the economical and sharing uh, economy nowadays. I mean, um, um, uh, develop creativity and uh, enable people inside le uh, legacy company to uh, express their creativity and build projects. And uh, that's something maybe we can do together. And uh, um, as Nick said, we are trying to uh, uh, develop uh, forums and uh, labs inside legacy companies so that we can uh, maybe uh, make more uh, agile process to develop projects. And that's a big uh, issue for us. So. Uh, we, can, we have to do it together and share the values of projects also inside legacy company. Thank you very much. Uh, I suggest that uh, to, uh, to end uh, our one table that uh, everybody uh, tells us how he sees uh, the future of his own uh, market or, or business, like in five years or in three years, 
uh, what do you see might change or not, or might be important uh, for your own growth and the growth of your ecosystem, of your market? Maybe you want to start, Stefan, and maybe uh, everybody else would uh, follow. Thank you. Um, well, I, I think talking about uh, mobility, I, th I think what's happening now is a huge revolution, which is uh, totally underestimated by a lot of uh, legacy companies today. Um, and when I say a huge, it's absolutely huge. So um, I think a lot of companies are lost in transition. It's uh, the world of the festivals. Um, so talking about the vision for the future, let's, let's be a little bit crazy. We know there is a revolution about uh, collaborative consumption. We know that uh, behavior changes with, uh, when, when we talk about cars. There is another revolution which is happening now, which is a technological a technology revolution. Uh, tomorrow's cars will be self-driving cars. That will happen. Maybe not tomorrow, but maybe after tomorrow, but that will definitely happen one day. So imagine that tomorrow, the cars are not, not only shared, but they are also autonomous. So imagine the, the change in the ecosystem of the mobility. If tomorrow, in order to move from one point to another point, I just need to go on my smartphone, say I want to go there, and then a car is coming, and the car is taking me where I want to go. So the question, and obviously the car is taking me where I want to go, the car is going to decide where which road is going to go through, and it's going to probably take people on the car. So it's going to be like the new public transport of tomorrow. So that's a huge change. And the question in the ecosystem, if, if this happens, is who is going to own the cars tomorrow? If it's this easy, if it's that easy to, to, to move. So if uh, we don't own cars anymore tomorrow, who is going, what is going to happen to uh, insurance companies, for example, what is going to happen to all, all, the, all the key players in the ecosystem. And imagine something else happening which could happen. If tomorrow's cars are shared, if tomorrow's cars are autonomous, and imagine that tomorrow's cars are free. Or to, imagine that tomorrow to, to move from one point to one other, another point, it's free. Because the business model would be based, for example, on uh, advertising. It might be a nightmare, no? It could be, and uh, that's what like, I'm saying. I mean, for Facto, for that's artists, why I'm uh, saying it's a huge revolution which yeah. is happening, which is similar to what happened 100 years ago, when the when when, when the the first cars were uh, on the roads, and where we were moving from horses to cars, and I think this, the revolution happening now is similar to this one. Yeah. Thank you. And if cars get uh, sh both shared and uh, autonomous, uh, maybe uh, Frederick's not that good for Zen Park. Or well, happily, it's in the long term. So, uh, yeah. for your contrary, business in five years, in fact, should be okay. Uh, we totally share a, a vision uh, of Stefan. And uh, self driving cars are also self parking cars. Good. And if you this is a short one. This yes. is not a long one. So, it's better for you. And uh, it's better for us because you, you, don't ha you have millions of car spaces around that are not uh, accessible to the a public driver. Because when you go in a public car park, you've got rules uh, versus uh, security, access of uh, handicapped people and everything, and very strong rules. Now, if cars are going to uh, self-drive and uh, self-park, you can open any car park and share it. And, uh, and uh, Zen Park becomes uh, bigger uh, uh, than uh, any actors, any legacy company because of their smart technology. So that's really an opportunity, but we're not there yet. It's great to have visions, but we have now to, to split the problem into small pieces to get there. Uh, what about Rika? Uh, <laughs> about Rika, just to share the vision at the end of the day, if that happens, actually, uh, there won't be any sharing uh, startups anymore, but a new huge leasing company, which is Google. Um, I think, yeah, I, I agree with the vision in the long run, very long run, uh, 30 years from now in, in the automotive industry. In between, uh, we believe in another revolution, which is uh, ownership efficiency. Um, in terms of cars right now, as I said before, uh, there is 40 million cars in France. Uh, they are all used less than 10% of the time, and they cost to the owner 250 billion euros. 
So the vision that we have for our business right now is divide, uh, I mean, diminish ownership versus usage and uh, increase accessibility of car for rent to enable people not to buy a car anymore when they don't really need to buy a car. And the revolution that we have been uh, looking at in the, in the short, uh, I mean, last two to three years is um, uh, um, a big revolution moving towards this trend, which is you have new economic model now enabling to access the, the car, whatever the, the usage you have. Five years from now, you had only auto sh uh, out, uh, car sharing, so it was Autolib, so you had uh, Autolib in Paris. So you could go from point A to point B in Paris, but if you carry on going on vacation on a weekend, you still have a car for yourself. What you have been observing over the past two or three years is, is this continuum of service appearing in this new economical model with, you know, blah, blah car to go from point A to point B, but you don't need a car at the end. Uh, we car, if you need the car at the end, then you rent a car because you need it for the weekend. Uber for taxi drivers and so on. And you have this continuum of service that enables you to say, hey, do, you, do I really need a car now? Because, you know, I have Uber for inside Paris. I have uh, blah, blah car if I don't need the car to go to Nantes. If I have to, I need the car to Nantes, I have the car and so on and so forth. So that's the first revolution that we're going to see, I think, uh, ownership efficiency before going to what you just described, which is like actually the end game, actually. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, last word to Tim, and uh, this, this will be the end of our, of our session. Uh, what happens if uh, cars are not only maybe autonomous, electric, uh, shared, but also open, which is your yeah. business? What yes, I totally agree with one the one vision. Minute, uh, okay, very fast. <laughs> I totally agree with the vision of Stefan, and uh, that's why we are uh, embracing the startup ecosystem, okay, because we are uh, in a big revolution and uh, we are changing from ownership to assess. So also the, the, uh, the engineering part of the vehicle has to be uh, different, but also the design. If you design something for uh, owner, for someone who wants to own a car, is very different. You have to do something really, uh, like put passion on top, like Ferrari, okay? But then, if you want to de design a vehicle for uh, accessibility, sharing, okay, so it's totally different. You have to think about how many uh, person, how the service, how uh, the vehicle is, uh, what's inside the vehicle. Also talking about the business models, uh, we, w we presented our platform with France Television and we say, we, we are really interested in the self-driving car because we want to put our content inside. Okay, so that's why we are embracing with our platform new ideas and uh, startups can develop their own project on top of it. Okay. Thank you to all you four. Thank you all to for your attention and your participation. Feel free to share outside with us, uh, outside of the studio. And uh, thank you all. Have a nice day. Thank you, guys. <laughs>